Context transition is the feature of the calculate function which turns a row context into a filter context. But what does it mean? And why do I need this? I will talk about how it works and I will show two examples where you can use it in your code. So as the title says, the good, the bad and the ugly. The good thing about context transition is that it helps with your text code so you can write easier code leveraging it. The bad thing about it is that it's not visible. So you kind of have to interpret it and imagine it, how it works. And yeah, the ugly thing is, is that it's not intuitive at all and it makes text confusing and harder to understand. Let's start with the bad thing that we can't see it in action. So where does context transition happen? It happens in iterations when you are having a row context, which is automatic in calculated columns and in measures you have to use an iterator for that. And when does it happen? If you use calculate, that's it. That's the only time it happens. On to the ugly thing. Context transition transforms a row context into a filter context. So for this, we need to understand what row context and filter context are. In a nutshell, a row context is like a row identifier. It tells Power BI in which row to execute the calculation. And filter context is telling Power BI what subsection of the table to iterate on what subsection of the table to use. I made a simple table with product sales. I'm going to show this with a measure. I'm gonna create a measure to count the products. So the row context is here created by Countix is saying that, okay, I'm going to iterate on the product sales and I'm going to count all the products there, which is five. And what the filter context does in this visual, it's saying, okay, I take all of these values, product category, color, sales. And for this cell, I'm going to create this virtual table and I'm going to calculate this expression in this subsection table, which looks like this. And in this cell, it does the same, but with these values and so on. If I add another product, a duplicate value, which I did before, I'm just going to replace this with zero. So we have two product twos with the same column values. Hit close and apply. And you can see that in this case, it looked at these values and then said, okay, I want this virtual table with all the matching values where I can find these. And this is how it looks like. And the count of the products there is two. Let's see what happens if I use this same calculation in a calculated column. I'm going to just copy it. Okay, new column. It's not really what we would expect. It returns the total number of products. It returns the total number of rows here in every cell. And the reason for this is that we have a row context here in the product column, but these rows are not filters. They are not filtering the value and how iterators work, such as the countix, is that they execute this calculation at the end, they aggregate all the values. So in every cell, it returns the total number of products. And what context transition does is taking, for example, in row one, all the values. Okay, I have these values here and I'm going to turn it in a filter context, which means it creates this virtual table with all the rows which match these values here. And when I do this here, I just put it in a calculate. And this is exactly what happens. 
that goes into the first row and says, okay, I have these values here in the first row. I'm going to turn it into filters and I have this virtual table and then I do the calculation there. In the next one, it does the same, but from product two, we have two matching values here. So it counts the two rows. Then product three, one, four, five. And when it comes to the last one, it creates the same filtered table and returns two. Instead of this code, I could also just write the measure product count and it returns the same values. And the reason for that is that every measure, if you use it in a calculated column or in another measure is always coded in a calculate function. So basically this one, because it's used here, looks exactly like this. Just the calculate is hidden every time. So that's what you have to remember whenever you use measures in calculated columns or other measures that there is always a context transition going on. And finally, let's get to the good thing. How can you take advantage of this? I created another model for this. It's a bit more complicated. I have a separate product dates and sales table. In the product table, we have 10 products with price, category and color. The sales table has the transactions simply with dates and sales amount. And the date is a calculated table and we just need it for the month and go back to the product. Let's say I want to create a slicer with the product sales share compared to the total sales. And based on that, I want to make the slicer with metrics like high performing, medium performing or slow performing. And since I want to use it in a slicer, I can't use a measure because you can't use measures and slicers. So I'm going to create first total sales in the product table. Which returns the aggregated total sales in all the cells because we have a row context, but there is no filter context. And I want to have the product sales. Then I just simply go create a new column. And I do the same, but I put it in a calculate. So it creates a filter context from the row context. So it finds the corresponding sales values from the sales table. Yeah, looks nice. Then I want to have a percentage of the product sales compared to the total sales. Create another column. Percentage to total sales. Product sales divided by total sales. Turn it into percentage. Yeah, nice. And I make some rules. If it's below 10%, then it's a low performing product. If it's between 10 and 20%, then it's a medium performing one. And above 20%, it's a high performer. I created a measure for this with switch. I'm just going to copy paste it. Sales performance. So it, if the value is true, the, that the top, uh, percentage is lower than 10%, then it goes low. When it's lower than 20 or equal 20, then it's medium. And then if it's higher than 20, it's high. Okay, cool. And I can also put all these four columns into one column. And it would look like this with variables, total sales, product sales, this percentage, and the same values. 
And when you are done, you can use it in a slicer. In the other example, I want to have a card which shows the highest monthly sales. I did here a matrix for it. So we have the free month with the sales respectively. And I want to calculate the maximum value. I'm going to use a measure for this. So what it does, it goes through the month values, August, September, October, and pulls to every row the aggregated value of the sales. If you put it in a card, it looks like this. Yes, it's not really what we wanted. This is the total amount of it. And if you put it here, we can see that uh, on the month level, the values are okay because they are filtered by the month values. But here in the total, there are no filters from the month coming. And the same thing is happening here because there is no filter context on the table filtering these values. And writing this without calculate, without the automatic context transition, it's quite complicated. I'm going to copy the code. What is happening here, the max goes through again the month values and it goes to the first row which is August. Then in this row it executes the expression. So these variables are nested inside of this max function. It goes to the first row and it calls all the related values from the sales table to the given month, which is August. And this is where you create the row context from the filter context manually. You turn the month value into a filter, which returns only the sales to this month. So it puts this table, this is then a second iteration. It says, okay, we have these sales values only from the month of August and do the iteration and aggregation of the values there, like some the values of this and then it returns this value at the end and looks at all the returned monthly sales values which are these three values and then it picks the highest value and that's the end of the max function so i click ok I'm gonna copy it and i put this here yeah, this is what we want to get. Put it also here to see. Yeah, it looks nice. And these steps, you could replace it just simply with a calculate, which would automatically create a filter context out of the raw context. I'm going to copy this. Create a new measure. And I put the calculate here, which does the same thing. It goes to this first month, to August, and says, okay, I have the August value. I want to have all the sales values with this filter. So it creates again this virtual table only with the August sales values. And then it returns the value of it and it goes to the next month and then the next month and then the end it returns the maximum value of this. Okay, I'm gonna copy this. Yeah, and this is the same. So you can see how much easier it is Instead of this, you can just write this and your life just becomes much easier. These were two kind of specific examples and I know it's not easy to understand, but I hope this video helped a little. 
And yeah, for me, it took also a lot of readings and watching videos to understand it. So I would just recommend the same to go and look at other sources and at the end, you will figure it out. And with that being said, thank you for watching and see you next time.